So this is the final video in the series. And in this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at Vista Pro. Now, what I'm going to do just at the very beginning, and I might actually cut through the next stage so you don't see it, but I'm going to quickly create some variations on our model and run them through Apache Dynamic Sim in order, so when we go into Vista Pro, I can better demonstrate how you might go about showing the results of your data. And as we'll discuss, showing the results of your data is exceptionally important. So what I'm going to do is I'm very quickly going to make sure that first of all, my Apache Sim has a sensible name, as we've said before. I'm going to call this window variation one making sure that macro, fling, macro flow is linked. Hit simulate. And now I'm going to go into model it. Now this will run through the model as it currently stands, but I can make variations now and get ready to run the next model off. So in the interest of doing this quickly, all I'm going to be using is the edit glazing doors. And I want to edit the two bottom floors so I'm going to do that and I'm going to use the very glazing tool. I could have also altered U values, but I'm really just trying to get myself in the habit of using this tool a little bit more often. Let's say we want 60% glazing at a height of 1.2 meters with a height of E1 meter. Okay, apply. So now we can see we've got these windows. Go to Apache one more time. Save changes. Variation two, simulate. And then variation three, same thing. I'm just gonna grab those rooms. And let's see if we can get this one done by the time that model's finished. And let's increase the height say we want full height glazing there we go I wonder how this looks in 3d view oh it's hideous good thing we're not architects okay so let's run that off here in the patch dynamic sim. I just realized some of you may actually be architects. If you are, I apologize for what we just done. So here's the final one running off. And as that one's going through, we're gonna load up Vista Pro. We can see in Vista Pro that we actually have these loading in. And part of the reason I say, make sure that these have sensible names is it cuts down on the amount of time that we have to spend treating data and things outside of IES like Excel. And when we're working in consultancy, the less time that we spend fiddling, the more time we can spend doing work we're actually getting paid for. So now that those three are in, one, two, three, we can select more than one at any given time by using the control button to click multiples. And we're gonna be using that too a lot, or we can use shift to select multiples as well. So shift or control. Now, on this interface, this works quite similar to the other parts of the programs, as in, if we click on rooms, then it will load up the room variables. So we can look at air temperature for any given room, any point in the year. Oops, don't want that. There we go, we want... So we see that there's the tools along the top here. Now, as a general rule of thumb, You want to be, if you're trying to show variables in action, as in you've altered something, using a yearly view is not a clever idea. Because if I load up a couple of these things, the data is so closely interwoven and is a huge data set at that, that this makes it virtually impossible to understand what in the world is going on here. However, if I reduce the time span, and in the bottom right, we can see that we have the months. And again, it still works off that control click or the shift clicking. So let's just go to June. We can see that now we've got the whole month and we can change this to be specific days. Or we can change this to be a day. Now all of a sudden we have our three graphs loaded in. 
and we can see them very very clearly and the effect of the change that we've brought remember I said about having nice labels at the bottom here well because we've got such nice labeling humble boast we can see that these are the different variations so this would be perfectly fine to copy and paste out and throw into a report it's ready to go now I bring, bring this down we can see that we actually have quite a lot of different variables so we can pull out the web um, if I turn everything off at the moment we can pull out the data from the weather file so we have the weather file data temperature dew point we can pull out information about the building so this is how the whole building is formed uh, these ones don't matter if these are selected or not so we can have a look at the whole plant sensible load remember our, our settings aren't exactly the best at the moment because I think we we didn't bother turning the heating off in the summer but I think it might be a good idea to mention the difference now between energy and loading so within IES we have the loads themselves and then we also have the consumption so if we have a an energy load like this this is the actual energy that the building is requiring uh, is being loaded onto the building systems so this does not take into account the efficiencies of those systems themselves if we take into account the boiler load, on the other hand, the boiler load does take into account the efficiencies of the systems. So this is the difference between a room load and a system load. And this is quite an important distinction. You don't want to get these two mixed up when you're sizing plant because this can, this can lead to some problems. So if we go down then we can also change this into carbon if we want to or we can go down to room the room variables we have things like air temperature dry resultant clove value amount of people within the space um, are quite we have the PMV vote which can be more or less useful depending on what you're doing oh we need a room here and this can indicate to you whether the room is being too cold or too warm we also have space conditioning and what can be useful is if you look at occupant gain you can actually work out to make sure that people are in at the right times and a personal one that I quite like, quite like to use just for error checking is if we go if we have got natural ventilation occurring then what we should see is that under natural ventilation here we should have zero because we've turned that off but under macro flow internal and external vent we should have some flow of air and we can see that here so we know that things are working that part is working so that can be quite useful we can also go down to surface level we can go down to opening levels and we can do quite a lot here. Across the top then we have some other tools. So I'm just going to keep it with the basic tools for the moment and then we'll talk about some more advanced things that we can do. So we have, we can produce tables for anything that we want. So let's take a table for air temperature over the course of a day. There we go, just giving a snapshot every hour. <coughs> We can do a synopsis, which will provide us with the minimum, max, and average, and mean, which can be very handy if we do this over multiple time sets as well. These will likely all be the same day, but sometimes they won't be because obviously the different variations may have different hottest or worst day requirements. We can do a range test. These are extremely, extremely, extremely powerful. And I highly recommend if you're doing this in industry that you get to know how to use these. 
but what we can do is that we can set up a logic for working out how many hours something is going to be in range or how some other sort of terms and we can save this as well so when this is particularly useful is if you have something like a hotel or a school and you have multiple classrooms that you need to check if they're doing overheating then what we could say is we could immediately bang it onto when occupied so we could set it up manually or we can do it to when occupied so then it will check if the room is occupied and it will return return a value for those times then we could say okay we want a air temperature test we want to know number of hours when the air is above 20 let's say 24 to begin with and we want it in steps of two and we want five steps number of hours greater than and we want let's just do percentage of hours and we can see immediately that's pumping out within a few seconds all of these now if you imagine if you have a few classrooms this is a very very powerful tool and it can make testing very easy so let's just save that and then I can bring that up at any time so very very powerful next on the list we have monthly totals Clearly this is not going to work for temperature, but if we went to loads, we can see what the megawatt hours are per year, or over the course of a year, and monthly. We have the peak timetable, which is just going to tell us what the peak times are. Let's use shift here. We have the peak day table, same thing. Peak day graph. Again, these tools are predominantly for, they're very useful for very quickly working out the worst case scenario for the variable that you're looking at. We have more esoteric ones now, like XY plot, where we can, again, these are tools that, so we don't have to pull the data out into Excel, where we can say, okay, well, what's quite nice about this is we can actually do a regression which is quite useful for working out if we're looking at temperature over the course of the year how is it varying within a room uh, if I load up the weather file for this we can see that there we can remove values over certain tools again my high, my recommendation for this kind of software is at this point because the data is already in you can't well you can do damage but it doesn't really matter so much and I would hasten to say have a play about with it find tools and just spend a little bit of time working with your data and seeing what works and what doesn't it's not like with other aspects of this software if you change a variable everything's gonna break or it may not break but it may have implications on the validity of your model no at this point we're pretty safe to do what we want there are some exceptions obviously we don't want to be deleting data but this is a fair way of non-destructively treating data and just viewing it in different ways so we can do a stacked plot instead I think we're going to need to go to energy for this one. Loads. We can do stack plots. We've got bar stacked and, and various different vibes. We've also got color gradients. And if we look at the solar irradiance, I think is the good one here. We can plot that as well which they work quite nicely on these kind of charts
We have 3D graphs, which, okay, truthfully, these are more gimmicky than anything. So let's look at the final bit of this, which is the comfort analysis. This is the tick and the question mark here. Now this builds on something that we looked at earlier, which if we have a look at building template manager, and by earlier I mean quite a few videos go now, we can click on the comfort tab and we see we have a lot of parameters here that we can set up. Now I've only set up the kitchen area, so apart from that there's going to be no people in this building. So this is only really going to work on the kitchen, but we can actually select multiple rooms. And we have our choices for different types of comfort analysis. So this is CM52 analysis, predominantly looking at overheating. So let's go for category three existing, and we can quickly create a report for that. And we can run that off. Fine, we'll come to that in a moment. We can also do an Ashrai 55 2013, 2017. And we have choices here for the analytical method. So given this is a naturally ventilated building, we can use adaptive thermal comfort method, but we can also run off the PMD and PPD if it was mechanical or air conditioned. And that will give us the results in Excel, which we can access through the browser. We can see them here. And we can see that we have a room that's failing. Fine. Oh, sorry, it's actually passed. Well, there we go. That's a, that's a happy convenience. Actually, given that the, a lot of the building is quite shaded at the moment and we have large operable areas, and this is probably to be expected. And then for the Ashrai 55, we see we have our figures here. And we can also get hold of these figures by, if we go into IES, we can see that they've imported into our figures here. So we can operative temperature, we can load that up now. And we can also work out our PMB and PPD as we would expect. So that is this figure here. And with that, that's it, we're done. That's uh, pretty much everything that you'll need from here. There are other little things like the energy report, but I'll allow you to play about with those in your own time. What I would say is that this learning how to use these tools within this is going to be a case for just playing about with them and finding out what works for you. There is ways of exporting this into Excel. So we can take any chart or table. And if we go to output, we can save as a text file or we can output this as a CSV. Or copy. I can't quite remember exactly where to output the CSV. I'll export results as a CSV there. And if you want to, you can build up quite nice graphics. I'll be the first to admit that the charts within IES aren't as nice as what you can produce in say Excel or Graphly but for most people this will be good enough. This is the final video in the series. I may do a few more looking at specific tricks within IES about how to speed your process up. Might look at how you use the default building templates that can really really speed up the process but for this series that was just trying to get someone with no knowledge into the software and take them through this is where we can end i don't think i'll create a video on looking at compliance apart from anything i don't actually have a compliance module on this license so i won't be looking at that and apart from anything if you are doing compliance type modeling then really this should be a conversation you're having with your senior engineer or the person looking after looking after you but thank you all very much for watching the series i hope you've enjoyed it and if there's any feedback yeah just leave it on a youtube comment and i might try and address it one day